The SEC Tournament. A chance to step up. A chance to shine. Carolina is lighting it up. There's no telling what Mississippi State can do in this tournament. There's a rivalry developing between these two teams. A chance to break through and make a name for yourself. Expect the unexpected because of the league's biggest stage. Destiny Henderson, she is on fire. So many weapons on this Mississippi State team. Anything can happen. Welcome to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. No one in the Southeastern Conference has been able to beat South Carolina this season. Only one team in the nation has been able to do it. Mississippi State was three points short of beating the Gamecocks in the first meeting. How will it fare in the SEC Tournament Championship game? Mississippi State, the defending champions, coming back to Greenville, South Carolina to try to defend that title against the number one team in the nation looking for its fifth SEC tournament title. Welcome inside the well here in Greenville, South Carolina. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. This is a big game for both teams, but for South Carolina, they're trying to make sure they get that number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. And I think that they have a really a statement to make because Mississippi State was the one team that played them the closest in the SEC conference. Now Mississippi State has in mind a very they're trying to hold on to the being the defending conference championship champions they won last season. Yeah, it was the very first tournament championship, but look at South Carolina's resume. 12 ranked wins more than any other team in the nation. They win a perfect 16-0 in SEC play. They have been number one for eight straight weeks. This tournament has been dominated by these two programs. Last year, it was Mississippi State winning its very first SEC tournament title. They defeated Arkansas, but the four previous seasons, it was all South Carolina, the only program in the conference to win four straight tournament titles. The Gamecocks looking for their fifth overall tournament title to go with that SEC regular season title. Do you see three years in a row, it was South Carolina and Mississippi State where South Carolina won. South Carolina won those three by over 10 points in each game. In order to win today, will it have to be that kind of margin? One wears maroon, one wears garnet, the rivalry growing every season between South Carolina and Mississippi State. The first meeting between these two programs, it was so close. Mississippi State had the lead by nine points in the fourth quarter before South Carolina came back and won. Danbury all the way to the hoop. Mississippi State is so good at getting to the basket. Three freshmen have started every game this season for the number one team in the nation. They came in very solid, very prepared. There's one of them, Aaliyah Boston, the SEC Freshman of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year. The contribution that she has brought this year, being that anchor inside for South Carolina. Mississippi State has a freshman in their starting lineup too. It's Rakia Jackson, number five in maroon. It'll be South Carolina ball. Now that's a matchup. Rakia Jackson being defended by Bree Bill. Those are two freshmen, one of the top defenders in the conference one of the top offensive producers in the conference. Jackson's numbers have been huge in the SEC tournament too. Her very first time playing in this tournament, averaging 26 points. She ain't scared. Nope. She's had back-to-back double-doubles too, and she only has four double-doubles on the season. Well, she came off the bench in the first game in this tournament, but she hit her stride as soon as she entered the game. Zion Cook gets rejected. Jessica Carter. The first meeting between these two teams was one of the most entertaining games that I've watched this season. It was a swing. 
First, South Carolina started out in charge. Then Mississippi State worked its way back. They took a lead through the second quarter on into the third. It came down to the very end in that fourth quarter for South Carolina to pull off the win. Maya Taylor will try the near side. Dan Barry kicks it out to the sharpshooter, Chloe Bibby. It's short. Gets her own rebound. Look, you're going to have to have those effort and toughness plays in this game. South Carolina in their man-to-man, -man, playing it like a zone, though, in an area, not leaving any gaps for drives to the basket. Goes off the hand of Bree Beal. It will stay with Mississippi State. Chloe Bibby from the other side. State almost had another offensive rebound. A key element in this game is going to be transition defense. In their first meeting, South Carolina had 22 transition baskets, and it's a great sign for South Carolina if Bria Bill is offensive-minded. She averages about six points per game, five rebounds per game, but what shows up on her stat line, that doesn't even cut it to what she does for Carolina. Defensively, she may alter a shot and not get the credit for a block, but her presence defensively is felt. Danbury wide over the rim. Herbert Harrigan in transition. South Carolina thrives in transition. They have had 37 fast break points in this SEC tournament. That's 21% of their total points. I want everyone to keep an eye. When South Carolina gets possession of the basketball and it gets in the hands of Ty Harris, her eyes get up the court and she has options and dials it up, picks the right one to go to. Rakia Jackson shot. Rattles out six straight points for South Carolina. Watch Ty Harris's eyes. She's surveying. She knows and even looks off the defense to drop the pass to Kiki Herbert Harrigan. Ty Harris, the senior point guard. Invaluable what she brings. She won a national championship along with her teammate Kiki Herbert Harrigan when they were freshmen. They've got a really good shot at winning one with their seniors. When you have that kind of experience, and Ty Harris thinks like Dawn Staley, she very rarely has to look to the bench of what Dawn would want to call Ty Harris already knows. Maya Taylor trying to go coast to coast, short on the layup. Mississippi State has struggled in the first quarter to score here this week at the SEC Tournament. Ten seconds for the Gamecocks. Harris pulls up in the short corner and shoots it a little short. Don Staley loves the team that she has on the floor right now. The number one recruiting class in the nation. They are exceeding expectations. I don't know if anybody thought that this class would come in and have South Carolina the number one team for eight straight weeks heading into the postseason. Rakia Jackson connects. Key Herbert Harrigan. Mississippi State wants to get back and execute. They have done a nice job in this first quarter and really getting the ball to the third side. What do I mean by that? Ball reversal, making the defense for South Carolina having to shift. Eight seconds. Jackson stepped around Boston, but missed the shot. Always keeping the pressure on Ty Harris in transition. Aaliyah Boston. Bree Beal with the rebound and the putback. So often.
Captain Beale is in the right place at the right time. She averages six points a game and she already has four. Mississippi State has ha hit one of its last eight shots. Here goes South Carolina. Ty Harris doesn't get the bucket, but does draw the foul. South Carolina on top by four. After the UConn win, Don Staley said, this is for the culture, and part of that is the fans. Just look at this crowd. Ty Harris said, these people are important. They're not fans, they're fams. That's what they call them. She said they show up from everywhere to watch their team play. The ones that don't show up, cheer for them on Twitter and fight their battles on Instagram. Zaya Cook said these fans cheer for everything, not just scoring. They cheer for subs, they cheer for defensive stops. This fan base is for the culture. Drea, Don Staley has done a great job building this whole culture around South Carolina, but so has Mississippi State's Vic Schaefer. There's a lot of garnet in here. There's a lot of maroon, too. South Carolina has led the nation in attendance the last five seasons. Mississippi State has set school records the last six seasons for attendance, and 20 of the top single game records have come under Vic Schaefer. Both of these coaches know what it means to not just win games, but to get the whole community involved in their basketball program. Vic Schaefer told me there are people from Starkville, Mississippi that schedule their vacation time around the SEC tournament. And he uses that for motivation for his players. He tells his team, you have a responsibility to perform at your best because these people have come here to support you. One of my favorite things that Vic Schaefer has his team do is after every game, I would say hundreds of people stay to get autographs and they don't leave until ev they sign every single one. It is impressive. Both South Carolina and Mississippi State have done that. Don Staley and her crew stay on the court. They don't run back to the locker room for their post-game meeting. They first, both teams, show their appreciation to the fans that came out to support them. Carolyn, that's why when we show up to games about two hours before the game, there's usually a line outside to get in the arena in Starkville and in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm just thankful they sang it save us a parking spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Miss Betty. <laughs> Mississippi State is trying to repeat as SEC tournament champion. South Carolina looking for its fifth title in this tournament. Danbury elevates. Man, she has been so good offensively. Slow start. Beal hesitated. Took it inside. Going to the line. Ty Harris found Bill ahead. That's bully ball from number 12, Bree Bill. Bill has already hit her season average in points per game. Six points per game. I think she's, she's got six. I think she came into this tournament with something to prove. And when you talk to her, she will never say that awards are important to her. But I do feel. She has been a player that has been overshadowed. There's a lot of talent on this South Carolina team, and she's getting her re recognition in this SEC tournament. Was not included on the SEC all-defensive team list, which was surprising to both you and I, Pat, right? She draws the assignment of defending the best player on the opponent's team. Right now, she's guarding Jordan Danbury. And Danbury's one for four. Oh, count it! Ty Harris can't believe it. Rakia Jackson able to finish. Ooh, right at the end, Ty Harris. But when you slap down, when you slap down, the officials see that, they're going to blow that whistle. Three-point play for Rakia Jackson. And Rakia Jackson blew a little kiss. A little kiss, a little Ooh. action going on on the court. Zaya Cook 
dropped all the way to the free throw line. Easy. First points for her. The balance. There are so many weapons at all five positions for South Carolina. All five starters have scored. Aliyah Matharu, she had a huge game for Mississippi State yesterday. Gives it up to Jessica Carter. Rebound, Jackson! South Carolina ball. Both of these teams have players that can come off the bench and make an immediate impact. Aliyah Matharu is one of those for Mississippi State. Yesterday, 15 points off the bench. In this tournament, both teams' benches have had a combined total of 17, 72 points. Their wow. Contributions from the second string. And I don't mean that as a down, step down. That's a great sign for your team when you know you can go pull from the bench. Makes you very dangerous. Kiki Herbert Harrigan is called for the travel. Champ Week continues today on ESPN2 and the ESPN app with two more women's championship games. The Big Ten will tip at 6 p.m. That's Ohio State and Maryland, followed by the Pac-12, Stanford, and Oregon at 8 p.m. ESPN Champ Week presented by Principal. One of the best weeks of the year. It's just enough tournament to get you excited for the NCAA tournament. It's got a different feel always. And these championship games are going to be good ones. Matharu called for the foul. Destiny Henderson was trying to go the distance. Another one of those key pieces off the bench we were talking about. It's Destiny Henderson. 21 points versus Arkansas. Career high. And she was a player that started at times last season. She would expect coming in her sophomore season automatic that she'd be in the starting lineup. But no, Don Staley talked to her about being that spark, being the leader of that second group off the bench. And you know what? Destiny Henderson's minutes went up even though she's not starting. It's one of the aspects that makes South Carolina such a tough team to play is that, yeah, you start the game against these five starters who are intense and can score. All five of them can. And then when something's not working out, you've got a whole bench of weapons <laughs> to go to. <laughs> that gives, that really helps a coach sleep a little better at night. It may make every other coach not sleep at all. Look, instant offense, Aliyah Matharu, a freshman in the championship game, ice water in her veins. Averaging nine points per game here at the SEC tournament over two games. Offensive foul on Henderson. Three turnovers for South Carolina. Bree Beal will switch places with Lily Grissett. Victoria Saxton also checking in for the Gamecocks. Replacing Herbert Harrigan. Now when this game started, South Carolina's defense was more of an open stance gap defense. There are two shooters now in for Mississippi State. Got to play him a little tighter. Uh-oh. Grissette's already down the floor. Missed it. Ty Harris smart, just pulls it back out. You can't forget about Victoria Saxton. And all you have to do, guards for South Carolina, is throw it up around the rim. Victoria Saxton is going to go get it. Mississippi State only shooting 25% from the field here in the first quarter. They've shot 28% in the first, first quarter in this tournament. And five seconds. Oh, Matharu lost it. Hitting up to Harris with the floater. 
misses as the clock expires, but South Carolina with an eight point lead at the end of the first 10 minutes. Rick, thank you. This must be the best day to be in studio because you get all the conference championship games. South Carolina leading Mississippi State here in the SEC Tournament Championship by eight points. Vic Schaefer of Mississippi State is wearing a mic for us. Let's go pregame with the Bulldogs. In championship games, and you are in a championship game today, by the way, that's what it comes down to. We're good, they're good. It comes down to people being tough. Again, toughness. It's easy to talk that talk. It's time now to go walk the walk. Let's go. How many times have we seen a Vic Schaefer coach team show toughness? It's every time they step on the court. Had to do it yesterday. They trailed by 12 points in the first quarter against Kentucky. And we're able to come back. We saw them down 13 to Texas A&M in the regular season, came back and won that game. Well, the thing that happens for Mississippi State when they have to come from behind, they know they've got their defense always in their back pocket. And he finds a way to get them turned up defensively. And once their defense starts getting stops, that gets their mojo working going on the offensive end. Victoria Saxton was called for her first foul. Henderson hops it over to Saxton. That was a defensive breakdown by Mississippi State. Nobody picked up Kiki Herbert Harrison as they broke the press. Jemiah Mingo Young directing traffic for Mississippi State. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, Lee Lee set got a piece of it. Looking for some help, she'll get it from Henny. Oh, Aliyah Matharu going for the block, draws her second foul. We talk about the effort from the bench. It's not just what they bring offensively, but defensively as well. And Lily Grissett making the transition from a post to the guard. The area that she had to show she could play was defensively on the perimeter, and she demonstrated that in that possession. First point for Henderson today. Largest lead for the Gamecocks. South Carolina cannot get comfortable in their first meeting. They went up 12 in the first half. And then Mississippi State creeped creep their way right back into the ball game. Look at Victoria Saxton, plays great defense, doesn't foul, goes up for the rebound, and draws the foul on the big for Mississippi State. South Carolina can play pressure defense on the drivers if they by chance get beat off the bounce. They know they got shot blockers on the back row. Mississippi State has one point in the second quarter. State ball. Champ Week continues next with an AAC semifinal. It'll be South Florida taking on UConn in the first semifinal. Winner of that one against either UCF or Cincinnati for the title tomorrow at 7 on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. ESPN Champ Week presented by Principal. Zaria Wiggins puts it through. 
there yesterday, Arkansas against South Carolina, a team that normally runs. They look fatigued because every possession, Ty Harris kept the pressure on the Arkansas defense, pushing the ball down the floor. Seven seconds on the shot clock. They go inside to Herbert Harrigan. Kiki drawing that foul. Her game this year has been taken to another level. You know, she's one of the most passionate players in the SEC, and she's been able to channel that passion now into getting production for her team. When you can get focused and get your emotions in order, good things can happen, and she's been a tremendous leader in her senior season. 13 points per game, hitting 51% of her shots. She had a season-high 25 points against Arkansas back in February. How many blocks does she have? Because she only needed three to tie Elena Coates for second all-time Gamecock shot blockers. None so far. Gamecocks working in transition. There's the layup in the bucket from Destiny Henderson. And Mississippi State will call timeout. Fast break points are deadly when Carolina's running. South Carolina on top of Mississippi State here, 26 to 13. Andy talked about the paint points, but the transition points, the fast break points have been great. Sue Bird talked about South Carolina doing what they do. They get out and run in transition. You've got Kiki Herbert Harrigan on your right, Destiny Henderson on your left. So Ty Harris has options as South Carolina runs in transition. 10 fast break points for South Carolina, none for Mississippi State. We told you coming into this game here in the SEC tournament, 21% of South Carolina's points this week have been fast break points. Well, that last fast break, that was on a missed bucket, but Dawn Staley told me at shoot around today, she wants Ty Harris to push on makes, misses, and dead balls. She feels like they have an opportunity to run in transition at all times, guys. Yesterday, Drea, we saw South Carolina take advantage of Arkansas. Arkansas had scored, and they were just walking back. What did South Carolina do? Ty Harris pushed it past the defense and got an easy two. You see those hands? Wow. You saw that. D. Cantor was Cantor surprised. <laughs> I was ready. You gotta be ready when you got the best seat in the house for the SEC Tournament Championship game. And Mississippi State has just struggled starting every game in this SEC Tournament. Shooting 28% in the first quarter of tournament games this year. And some more fast break points. You know that song, all we do is win, 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 win. Oh, South Carolina says, all they do is run, 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 run. <laughs> I thought you were going to actually sing it. I'm saving that. Okay, okay. Wait for it. Danbury gets the bucket and gets the foul call. That's her second field goal. Slow starts have hurt Mississippi State versus LSU. They were four for 14 against Kentucky yesterday in the semifinals. The same story and today four for 16. Now they've been able to climb out of those first two holes. Might be a little harder against the number one team in the nation. Well, Ty Harris has got to go to the bench. She just picked up her second foul. The thing that Ty has to stop doing when the player she's beat, she reached in twice today at the last minute and gets that cheap foul. It's unnecessary. You're better off making the offense have to shoot over you instead of trying to get that cheap steal. So they've got Zaya Cook and Destiny Henderson on the floor who can run the point guard position for Carolina. Lily Grissett. He's a smart play by Destiny Henderson. 
And this is a player, number three for South Carolina, that I thought had a high chance of being sixth woman of the year. With the contribution she brings to the court as soon as she comes in, Dunn Staley said, well, she didn't get it this year, probably not going to get it next year. Expect her to be in the start lineup. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Kiki. Mad Kiki, timing, sizing it up. Zara Wiggins has got to understand. Mad Kiki is in the house. One, two blocks away now to be tied for second with Elena Coates for career blocks. Mingo Young. A dagger from the freshman, Zaya Cook. Big lead for Carolina. They're in charge, they're locked in. And even with Ty Harris going to the bench, still pushing in transition by Zaya Cook and Destiny Henderson. This South Carolina team right now clicking on all cylinders. And did you see who was the first person to meet Zaya Cook coming over off the bench? Ty Harris got in there, was coaching her up. I mean, this is Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan's team. They trust their seniors. Their seniors have gained the respect of the underclassmen. Carolyn, you're talking about trust. I talked to Dawn Staley earlier today, and she said this team gives her so much life. They're so inspirational and so trusting. I asked her if they make her better, and she said no, but they make me my best self. And I saw a clip of Dawn Staley earlier this year at practice, and she said to this team that this team, that's a good move by Rakia Jackson, but this team made her yearn to come to practice, made her eager to come to practice. She looked forward to it every day. Why? Because they play hard. And he, she doesn't have to coach them with stuff off the court. This is a very mature group that is all about taking care of business. There's a lot of trust between Don Staley and her players, and there's a lot of respect there. To, they want to play hard for her because they know what she's built at South Carolina. They were the 2017 national champs. They've been to the Elite Eight three of the last five years. Ninth straight 20-win season. They've hit 31 wins on the year. The house that Don Staley has built. I talked to a reporter by, beforehand and said, do you think Don Staley came in with something to prove? I don't think Don Staley's about proving anything. She knows what success looks like, feels like, sounds like. Yamaya Morris coming off a career day. Yamaya Morris was huge for Mississippi State yesterday. 11 points, 10 rebounds. Her first career double-double. She played career 25 minutes. That's the most she's played. South Carolina just responds with a bucket from Herbert Harrigan. Mingo Young picks up her dribble in the paint. Herbert Harrigan and Morris exchanging some words. We'll see what the ruling is going to be here. And Apier, D. Kantner, and Bev Roberts will get together and figure out what the call is going to be.
Hicks after the block. Then Kiki stepping in. Trying to defend their freshman. A little extra chatter going on between the two. And then Zaya Cook comes in to separate it. China and Bev have gone to the monitor to look. See what happened. It was hard for me to see. Was that a jump ball they called? Or yes, the call first the call, yes, the first call was a jump ball. Okay. Possession arrow pointing to South Carolina, but we're waiting to see what happened after that call was made because that's when the words were exchanged. Herbert Harrigan stepping in front of Yamaya Morris in between her and Aaliyah Boston. She does give a technical to Yamaya Morris. I'm not 100% sure if she also teed up Herbert Harrigan. She did not show the technical symbol, but she pointed to Kiki Herbert Harrigan. So now they'll switch it up and Dekantner will come to the monitor. I'm guessing that they're going to look to see if there was any extra contact, if they need to increase it to an intentional foul. It's a contact foul. We saw them tee, them, tee up Yamaya Morris. No, I didn't see anybody touch yeah, anybody. Yeah, I didn't either. There were just a lot of words being exchanged. So Bev Roberts is coming over to let us know right now. She'll talk to Carolyn. So a jump ball was called. Then there were double technicals called. One on Yamaya Morris, the other on Kiki, Kiki Herbert Harrigan. The ball will go back to the point of interruption and they'll play ball. Oh, so you see Maya Morris does push Aaliyah Boston off, and that's when Kiki Herbert Harrigan steps in, and the technical foul is on Herbert Harrigan. So because of the double technical, no shots. South Carolina ball. Championship on the line. Battling. Every possession counts. Kiki Herbert Harrigan said if there's one player that can calm her down on the court, it's Aaliyah Boston. And she was jumping to Boston's defense. Well, don't go after Aaliyah Boston, I guess. You got that right. And <laughs> hey, look, both of these teams know this is a big game. They're both tough, they're both physical. Zaya Cook has settled in. And she got her stepped on her face yesterday, then after that little extracurricular activity i think that's the kind of motivation that turns her up <laughs> extracurricular activity getting her face stepped on hey, well, she's got a red patch on her eye too well, well the extracurricular i was talking about was between boston and morris oh, oh. yeah <laughs> boston feeding peel knocked away by espinoza hunter You think Kiki Herbert Harrigan is fired up right now? Matt Kiki. Nasty in lashes. Look, she just times it, sizes it up. And then the flex at the end. She brings the tube, the attitude to South Carolina. 
One more block and she will tie the career record. Zaya Cook high off the window. Whistle is blown on Jemiah Mingo Young. Look, Ty Harris has two fouls, and she's over on the bench, and her and Dawn Staley are still going through things. The communication that these two have with each other, that's why they know how each other think. What a luxury to have a point guard who's basically in your head on the floor. Just an extension. It's like Don Staley's alter ego is in the game through Ty Harris. And even when she's not in the game, she's still over there. They're talking about the game. They're making plans for the second half. Harris has been sidelined with two personal fouls. Jessica Carter! Good move! One minute to go till the half. Jessica Carter just gave it right back to Herbert Harrigan. And immediately, Aaliyah Boston steps in. Kiki's already got the one technical. And every game cop knows they need Kiki Herbert Harrigan to stay in this ball game. She's got to keep her head. Look, Aaliyah Boston just turned to her. You good? She said, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Powerful when a freshman can do that to a senior. The power of Zaya Cook. And she grew up playing football. And when she got her face stepped on yesterday, the trainer came out. Zaya was trying to wave him off because if the trainer comes on the floor, you've got to come out of the game. And she was not trying to be subbed out. You can see her eyes a little bit red. Herbert Harrigan will take a seat. Look at the South Carolina fans standing up for Herbert Harrigan. rebound from Jessica Carter. Look for Danbury to get more aggressive, more offensive minded. <laughs> Scramble for the ball. Nobody can hang on to it. Rakia Jackson goes to the floor fighting for it. Possession arrow pointing to Mississippi State. Keep an eye on Espinosa Hunter in the corner. They went for a three to end the half yesterday against Kentucky. She was trying to get open. Mingo Young, though, had a layup and left it short. Destiny Henderson's heave will be short, too. South Carolina up 38-22 to 22 at the half. Off and running. Every stop, after every stop they got defensively with a rebound or with a steal, they were off to the races, scoring quick in transition. 28 paint points, 14 fast break points for Don Staley's crew. She's over there with Drea. Coach, Kiki Herbert Harrigan got a standing ovation from your fans when she went to the bench. How would you describe her play? I mean, she's inspired. She's not going to let anybody pick on any of our uh, big freshmen. 
Um, I mean, Kiki's emotional. I think she waits for opportunities to, you know, get herself riled up. I mean, she, she was able to play through it, but, you know, it, it, got, it got a little testy out there, so we had to get her out of the game so she won't pick up another foul. And you all played most of the second quarter without Ty Harris. You were able to keep the lead. How did it happen? Uh, Destiny Henderson, she's done a great job at pushing tempo. Um, she's putting them back on their heels, and um, hopefully we won't have to run as many plays if we're going to play in transition. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Number one team in the nation trying to, trying, to, trying to stay perfect in the SEC. Let's get you back to the studio. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. Is it really an SEC tournament championship game if Red Panda is not in the building and how did Alyssa Lang get to toss her the bowls? Red Panda means that it's a big game. She started this at 11 years old, rides an eight foot tall unicycle and she can balance up to 16 bowls on her head. That's an MVP right there. I just wonder, when did she come up with the idea I'm gonna ride a unicycle and put catch balls on the top of balls on top of my head and somebody's gonna pay me to do it at halftime of a basketball <laughs> game i love it halftime of the sec tournament championship game courtney lyle and carolyn peck with you south carolina leading this one big 38 to 22 what do you think about their defense so far i am so impressed defensively because it's one-on-one -on -one. they have communicated when switches have needed to happen they've had each other's back and you know what with the extension the length of south carolina even when mississippi state thinks that they've got a lane to the basket. There's a shot blocker, and Mad Kiki is one of those on the back line. South Carolina outscored Mississippi State 20 to 12 in the second quarter. Most of that time, Ty Harris was on the bench with two fouls, and South Carolina still found a way to get it done. That shows you the depth that they have. Well, the thing that makes South Carolina a contending team for a national championship. It's their defense. They've held Mississippi State to shooting tw under 23% from the floor. A season low 22 points in the first half for Mississippi State. You see that defense. A step off, just really respecting the drive. Gonna force. See, that's a tough shot. Herbert Harrigan gets her own rebound, a little soft on the putback. Oh, Ty Harris swiped it. Picked the pocket of Jessica Carter, but no points. But I like Bree Bill. There was no, there was a lot of contact, contact but Bree Bill, no fuss about it. She just got back on defense. Rakia Jackson elevates over Ty Harris. But Ty Harris reached in again. She picked up a third foul. She's got to get her hands up on a shot contest. Herbert Harrigan tried to step through. Take two. We'll find out where your team is dancing on March 16th at 7 p.m. on ESPN and the ESPN app. All 64 teams for the NCAA Women's Tournament will be revealed. We'll break down the seeds, matchups, and the disappointments. Selection Monday, a week from tomorrow. Can you believe it? Baylor goes down to Iowa State today. Now I have so many questions for the selection committee and Charlie Crane. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure they've got a lot of a lot of questions themselves. Kelly Crane's been in the studio, which has been great, so he'll have an update for us. It's fun having him here to keep us up to date of what each game meant. I tried to pick his brain about how he actually does it, and I just got confused, and I really don't know. I'll just leave that to him. And for people <laughs> to have an appreciation for what he does, he stays up and watches games until the last women's basketball game is played. Usually we get that email at 3 a.m. Bree Beal, eight points. 
Mississippi State calls a timeout. South Carolina up 45 to 26. In the SEC Tournament Championship game, Kiki Herbert Harrigan is the only player in double figures. The fans have come up with a nickname for her, Matt Kiki. Because she plays with an edge. And let me tell you something. She's going to take care of her teammates. It was a little elbow action there. She steps in between Morris and Boston. But defensively, she's a stopper. And when she's blocking shots and playing like this, the rest of her team get right behind her as well. That's Mad Kiki, and I mean that in a good way. She really likes the title. We asked her, are you okay with Mad Kiki? She goes, yeah, I kind of like it. she got that big smile on her face. Her numbers have been great in the SEC tournament. We've even seen some Mad Kiki t-shirts in the stands. we got the number one Mad Kiki fan in the house. <laughs> you got to love that. <laughs> she is just one block away from tying for second with Elena Coates in career blocks at South Carolina. South Carolina looking for its fifth SEC tournament title. They won four straight before Mississippi State won last year. Rakia Jackson, excuse me, Jessica Carter gets the drop in. Quick shot from Cook. In the last possession, South Carolina came back in a zone. So after the timeout, Mississippi State, two quick buckets. Danbury's up to nine points. They go inside to Aaliyah Boston. Herbert Harrigan feeding her. When you got a post player that naturally knows how to position themselves and find gaps, whoo, what a value. And doesn't mind the contact. What does she call it? Funness. <laughs> <I love> <laughs> Oh, yeah, I love all that funness down there. Like mm. that. Yeah. Stolen away by Danbury. Yeah, she's quick. She used her quickness yesterday against Kentucky, both on the offensive end and defensively. She was just a nightmare against Ryan Howard in that second half. It has been so big that Jordan Danbury was granted that extra year of eligibility back in August to play for Vic Schaefer, who has a very young team. He needed that experience, that competitiveness. In the defense, one-on-one. -on -one. You've got the shot blockers on that back row. Mingo Young shot bounces off the back iron. Second chance for State. Oh, I think Jump Danbury should have taken that. First foul on Rakia Jackson. No team in the SEC has been able to take down Don Staley's South Carolina Gamecocks. Eight straight weeks, they have been number one. Their only loss was to a ranked opponent, number 17, Indiana, and it was earlier on in the season. That was when Aaliyah Boston had lost a close friend, a teacher, from her prep school and was coming back, and a freshman just really getting her emotions back into check, but she bounced back from that against Baylor. So, yeah, it was a really good comeback for the freshman. South Carolina has 12 wins against ranked opponents. That is more than any other team in the nation. Again, Ty Harris goes up and gets fouled. But you know what I liked about that transition? Ty Harris made that pass down the court without a dribble. She didn't have to catch it, dribble, and figure it out. She caught it, and her eyes told her exactly what she needed to do. Ty Harris has been a big reason this team is number one. They've got a heck of a resume, too.
for the NCAA Tournament Selection Committee. They are projected to be the number one overall seed, especially if they get a win here today. Interesting note that Baylor did lose today. They were projected as a number one seed. When I look at the potential meetings for New Orleans, it could very well come down to South Carolina and Oregon. And I think that would be a great matchup. Ty Harris going head-to-head -head with Sabrina Ionescu, Kiki Herbert Harrigan, and Satu Sabali. Ruthie Hebert going against Aaliyah Boston. I wish I could just order up what I, I want know. to see happen, because that would be a great <laughs> matchup. Well, we get to watch Oregon tonight. Don't forget the Pac-12 championship is coming up later, about 8 p.m. Eastern. Oregon and Stanford. Matharu lays it up and in. Matharu hadn't played much because she was in some foul trouble early. That's another three-point shooter for Mississippi State. Look at Ty Harris finding Bree Beal. Oh, got to finish that one. Second chance does. 13 second chance points for South Carolina. Ty Harris has eight assists. And no turnovers. We're still in the third quarter. Matharu. And they're off. Free Beals going to the line. South Carolina is off and running. And they like to share the basketball. Let everybody touch it. Ty Harris up the court, first to Kiki, out to Zion, then dish it, little bit for Bill. Why not get in the party? What a rivalry it's become between Mississippi State and South Carolina. They have been responsible for the last five SEC tournament titles. South Carolina looks in control right now on a 12-2 run over the defending tournament champ. They've been off. Their defense has been extremely impressive, but they're turning that into quick points running in transition. They have 19 fast break points, and they've been able to score at will, too, in the paint. 40 paint points. Andy Landers talked about that at halftime. Over 50% of South Carolina's offense this season has come in the paint. Those are high percentage shots. Well, and it's a lot of work on the offensive glass as well. That's how Bree Bill got to the free throw line. Uh, you're talking about fast break points. South Carolina this season has 41 fast break points against Mississippi State. The Bulldogs have six against the Gamecocks. This is the second meeting. Well, they own South Carolina today, owning the glass, rebounding, using the glass. Zach Cook, I see you. But then just running, and Ty Harris has everything to do with how the Gamecocks can run in transition. Four players in double figures now, thanks to Cook's points. the balance that South Carolina has offensively. And on any given night, it can be a group of them, it can be one dominant player. 
just from yesterday to today to today we've seen different people step up destiny henderson was just fantastic she couldn't miss yesterday had a career high 21 points and then look at brie beal who's known for her defense not known for lighting up the stat sheet she has 12 points and 11 rebounds her first career double double well, Carolyn, you were talking about how any player, any night can go off for South Carolina. And that's what Don Staley told me today. She said, as a coach, you can get stale with your teams, but not this team. She doesn't have to have a system. She can get a feel for the game and bring something out of her bag that they've never even done before. And they understand it and they execute it. Well, you look at how that happens. Bree Bill tonight, 11 rebounds, 12 points. And Herbert Harrigan's adding to her total. Up to 15. We did their last game of the regular season against Texas A&M. Kiki Herbert Harrigan so emotional before senior night. But she played like an All-American. And she has played that way ever since. Double-figure points for her in that game in the first quarter. And I asked Don Staley about that. Woo, Boston. And Don Staley said, Kiki doesn't want to lose. This is a player that is playing to win right now. And the freshman center, Aaliyah Boston's got her back. Ten blocks for South Carolina today. Shot clock violation. Champ Week continues today on ESPN2 and the ESPN app with two more women's championship games. The Big Ten tips at 6 p.m. with Maryland and Ohio State, followed by Stanford, Oregon, and the Pac-12 at 8 p.m. Champ Week presented by Principal. If you, have, if you haven't seen Oregon, that's a good opportunity to do so because we may see, like you mentioned, the South Carolina team facing Sabrina Ionescu and the Oregon Ducks. And you think South Carolina has a lot of weapons, so does Oregon. They do. There's been a lot of chatter on social media of who's better, Oregon or South Carolina. I think it'll be a fun one to watch. I like the defense of South Carolina. Now, Kelly Graves made an emphasis about midway through the season for Oregon, and Oregon picked their defense up. So both teams have balance as far as weapons in all five spots. Then picking up defensively, it's a matchup I'd love to see. State tosses it up to Zaria Wiggins. And here comes Zaya Cook. Herbert Harrigan for three. State can take the last shot of the quarter. Aliyah Matharu. Good decision to go quickly inside to Yamaya Morris, but Mississippi State struggling, shooting 27% from the field today. Talking about a possible matchup between South Carolina and Oregon in the NCAA tournament, that means that South Carolina would have to face Sabrina Ionescu, who is the only player with 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 1,000 assists. And this puts it in context. Look at the great players of records she has broken as better than. You're talking about Diana Taurasi, Lisa Leslie, Asia Wilson. Holy cow. Look at the season stats comparison between Oregon and South Carolina. A lot of these numbers are very similar. They're right around that same range. Field goal percentage a little bit better for Oregon, but what a matchup that would be. Rebounding. Looks to be the advantage for South Carolina. And then also defense. Holding their opponents, only shooting 33%. Both South Carolina and Oregon expected to get number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. Carolina, if they continue to hold out here and win the SEC championship, they are projected to be the number one overall seed. 
and they could play all their way, all the way to New Orleans through Greenville, through this building right here. This is just a warm up, right? And let me tell you, great, Greenville is a great city. And look at the fans that follow South Carolina. It's not far from Columbia, maybe about a two hour drive from Columbia, South Carolina to Greenville. They have made their way here today. There's also some maroon in the stands from Mississippi State. They travel very well too. But when it's a two hour drive and you get to see the number one team in the nation, I'd do it. Me too. And Ali Mathabru for Mississippi State is going to be a player. With instant offense, came in big, big buckets against Kentucky yesterday. She and also Mingo Young for Mississippi State, another freshman as well. They were big in the earlier meeting between South Carolina and Mississippi State. Motisha Me here in the game now for Carolina underneath. Swatted away by Yamaya Morris. Danbury drives in and draws the foul. This meeting between these two teams has been a lot different than that first one. They only met one time in the regular season, but it was really close throughout that whole game. Well, the, South, the first quarter, South Carolina pretty much was in charge. Then Aaliyah Boston got in early foul trouble, and South Carolina stopped making shots. Mississippi State turned their defense up, and they started making shots. They really started controlling the tempo from the second quarter through the third. It wasn't until late in the fourth. Tall, it was a tie ball game with a little less than four minutes left to go, and it was back and forth. I was sitting on the edge of my couch watching that one. Oh, me too. It was a tie Harris steal with 3.16 left on the clock. The momentum swung back for South Carolina. And then Zy Cook, hey, she got a steal, attack, score, and flex. It was over. <laughs> when you throw in the flex. <laughs> yeah, Mississippi State only lost by two points to South Carolina. They've come the closest out of any of the teams in the SEC to beating the Gamecocks. Nobody's been able to do it. And it's going to be hard for anybody in the nation to beat them. You know, what makes South Carolina so good? It starts with the point guard who thinks like their, win their coach who was a winner as a player and understands the game. She, Ty Harris also has national championship experience. Then they have balance at all five positions. They're skilled, they're talent, talented, and they're tough. And to add to that, they've got bench players that can come in and contribute and really never lose a step. Now South Carolina's bench averages 26 points per game in SEC play this year, but it starts at the head. It starts with Don Staley and Ty Harris. Look at the comparison here between Don Staley her senior season compared to Ty Harris's senior season. Ty Harris can shoot a little better from three, coach. But you asked Don Staley about that. I think she probably want to take Ty out and have a shootout. That would be appointment television, too. No question. <laughs> Guys, I talked to Ty Harris, and she told me she gets a little bit of anxiety and starts feeling pressure when she thinks about the WNBA and her future. But all she has to do is refocus on this team. She said... This has been her best year because it's full of genuine joy and love, and that's all she needs. Uh, she doesn't need to worry about the next level just yet. She's got quite a few more ball games to play. Well, you can see the relationships on this team. I mean, talk about it bringing her joy. You can see that in practice, how everybody interacts with each other. And we've had the, the privilege of watching several of Don Staley's practices. It's been a lot of fun. They're all about business when they're between the lines. And then when Don gives them the water break and they go to the water cooler, music's going. They're having fun and a good time. When that whistle blows and it's time to go back to work, they do a terrific job of turning it back on. And you know what I like about Dawn's practices? She gives them those breaks. So you adjust just like you have a break in between quarters. It doesn't break your momentum. You know how to turn it off and then turn it right back on. Victoria Saxton whistled for the foul on Jordan Danbury.
about Ty Harris. Looking at her numbers right now, Peck, she's got a double-double. 10 points, 10 assists. Her career high is 14 assists. First double-double of the season for Harris, 10th of her career. Coming into this tournament from the regular season, Ty Harris was involved in 30% of the scoring of South Carolina, either scoring points or assisting to field goals. Mitharu. You said she's going to be a player. Yeah. She's a player right now, but as she continues to grow, she'll be a star in this league. Well, the way that Vic Schaefer and his staff develop talent, I can't wait to see her just next year. Can't imagine what her senior year is going to be like. You know, she's not one of those players that is listed in the ranking of the top 15, but she can play. Mingo Young on the fast break finishes. Matharu came into Mississippi State. She was a five-star, number 28 overall in this past recruiting class. Won a state title as a freshman. She was a biomedical engineering major at Mississippi State. That sounds awful. <laughs> you got to be disciplined and do a terrific job with time management. Handle that kind of schedule. And that South Carolina has a 17-point lead. But six minutes is still a long time. As fast as Mississippi State can get up and down the floor, South Carolina can't start celebrating just yet. Gamecock's largest lead today has been 27 points. Decided to keep it. She thought about dishing it out. Oh, Danbury slid. She did get up. That was scary. They need her for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, immediately Vic Schaefer went to his bench, looked for a sub. Try to get Danbury out of there. Smart play. I mean, we've, the last two days we've seen her make some great passes. Well, it takes two people to stop her. Once she gets that seam to penetrate to the basket, she's going to require help, but she does a terrific job of making the decision of where to use the drop pass, lob pass, but she finds the open person. Mississippi State is projected to be a three seed in the NCAA tournament. South Carolina up here in the fourth quarter. Let's get you back to Brick in the studio. Exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal Financial Group. Investments, retirement, insurance. South Carolina has been pretty loose before this game. Is it even a championship Sunday if Champ Staley is not here? You have to have Champ when you're going after that championship trophy. Champ Staley here with his mom, Dawn Staley, on championship Sunday at the SEC tournament. And the Gamecocks up 72 to 52. They've led by as many as 27 points. South Carolina is trying to make sure that they are that top number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament with a win today. Their resume, it's pretty impressive. When you look at going undefeated in the SEC, they've beaten 12 ranked teams. They pull off the win today. That would be 13 ranked teams on their resume rolling into the NCAA tournament. 25 straight wins for South Carolina, too. Program record. 
after losing that game to Indiana, they have not looked back. And it's not like they've had any easy tests. They beat number two Baylor at the time. They beat UConn. Mississippi State once already this season. They beat Maryland in the earlier yes, part of the that's season. That's right. That was their first ranked win of the season. Don Staley constantly compliments this team. She does not have to coach effort. You watch. It's the expectation of each player has of themselves and each other. We don't talk about Lily Grissett enough. Yes, yeah, she has gotten herself back in tremendous shape after a hip surgery, transferred from a three to a four. And that was communication between she and Don Staley. Don Staley said, you want to play the three? These are the requirements. And Lily Grissett committed to that. Jayla Hemingway stepped out of bounds. It'll be South Carolina ball. South Carolina, less than four minutes away from their fifth SEC tournament title. They went undefeated in the regular season, 16-0. Trying to cap it with a conference tournament championship. Did the same thing in 2016. Sports Center. Tonight with John Anderson and Kenny May, and after the XFL, they'll have Lakers Clippers reaction, plus three more tickets get punched to the NCAA tournament. And SC Featured celebrates the first U.S. women's bas baseball team, excuse me, since World War II. That's very fitting on National Women's Day. We've had celebration throughout the arena all day, taking pictures and posting on social media. And we get to watch the SEC tournament women's championship game, too. Pretty cool. Not just watch it, we get to call it. Oh, right, I forgot. <laughs> Reset going up for the boards, and Mingo Young comes out with the rebound. Mississippi State has outscored South Carolina in the fourth quarter, 17 to 13. There were a lot of question marks around this Mississippi State team coming into this season just because of the youth they had. They have experienced so much success under Vic Schaefer, but this is a much younger team. And Don Staley is going to make a substitution and bring out Ty Harris. Second double-double of the season for Ty Harris. 10 points, 10 assists. Impressive, the leadership from Ty Harris and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. You talked about low expectations. Who would have thought when you've got five freshmen that come in that three of them are going to be in the starting lineup? Then once they're in the starting lineup, the success that they have experienced. And we're talking about from day one. They have used the same starting lineup all season. You know why she hasn't had to change the starting lineup? Everyone has accepted their roles, and no one has taken a role for granted. Mingo Young with a good turnaround look. What you were talking about Mississippi State and even getting to the finals and having the season that they have had with their young team. They brought five seniors in here last year to win the SEC tournament. So for Vic Schaefer to bring this young team and get them back here again, hey, kudos to Coach Schaefer. Schaefer, the job is done. It's a hard working group right there. 27 wins on the season, only five losses for this young team with one senior, Jordan Danbury, her last SEC tournament. And she has played extremely hard. She's brought 
quickness and her defense. And I'm going to tell you, Vic Schaefer will have his team prepared when they get into the NCAA tournament. There are no limits for this young Bulldog basketball team. Projected as a three seed in this year's tournament. We will find out a week from Monday what Mississippi State's path will look like. But Jordan Danbury, she's been a stat stuffer all year long. She points, she's efficient scoring. She dishes it to her teammates and she'll steal the ball. Her she's just so quick, her yeah. hands. And then when she gets the basketball, it's lights out, headed the other direction. Timeout by Mississippi State. A minute nine remaining. South Carolina, these are the five starters we've been talking about, and they've kind of taken on a superhero persona, if you will, each one of them different. Well, you start with Bree Bill, the X Factor. Everything she does may not show up in the stat sheet, but it's beneficial. Then you have Aaliyah, the Beast Boston inside, a post player that knows how to get position and finish. Dynamite, Zaya Cook, explosive. Hey, when she flexes, great things are gonna happen for the Gamecocks, and we saw Mad Kiki, the enforcer today, she brings that attitude to the court. But cool, calm, and collected. Makes the right passes, right decisions all the time for South Carolina. That's Ty Harris. All of these players know their role. They've accepted that, and they focus on it. And that's why this team works so well. Well, in their role, it's kind of like their, their badge of honor, their responsibility of what they need to bring to the floor. You could add to this if we had enough room on the screen for you've got Destiny Henderson that comes in off the bench. You've got Victoria Saxon and Lily Grissett that contribute as well. So, I mean, Dawn Staley has to be real comfortable that she's got a handful of cards and she can pull any trick she wants at any time. South Carolina on the cusp of their 26th straight win this season. Their fifth SEC tournament title. What Don Staley has done, I still am amazed because I played and coached at a time when South Carolina's women's basketball wasn't even on the map. And to look where it is right now, that's amazing. Five starters today, 51 points, 31 rebounds. They're rolling. This is a good send-off for the number one team in the country as they head into the NCAA tournament. There's a two from Andra Espinosa Hunter. South Carolina can just walk it up the floor. Perfection in the SEC regular season. Perfection in the conference tournament. No team in the SEC can beat South Carolina and the rest of the nation better watch out for the Gamecocks. For the fifth time, South Carolina is the SEC Tournament Champion. Two seniors setting the tone for this Gamecock crew, the number one freshman class in the nation. It has all come together at the right time. 13 wins over ranked opponents. Undefeated in conference action, undefeated here in Greenville. The champs wear garnet this year in the SEC. South Carolina expected to be the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. No team has gone 16-0 in the SEC and won a national title. But South Carolina sure has an opportunity to do just that. Twenty-six straight wins for South Carolina. They take down Mississippi State 76 to 58. We will see State again in the NCAA tournament.
projected as a three seed, but what a showing from the Gamecocks. They took control early and held on to lead the entire game here at the SEC Tournament Championship. Let's send it over to Andrea Carter. Kiki, you all just went undefeated through the SEC your senior year. How does it feel? I mean, it feels great. It's really fun playing with this group of girls, and it was just amazing to, be out, to come out here and be able to win the uh, SEC Championship with them. Kiki, thank you. Thank you. What an incredible showing from South Carolina. They are the SEC Tournament Champions for the fifth time. South Carolina, perfect in the SEC. We'll see them in the big dance coming up.